Well, for more on this, we can speak to Colleen Heal Cardinal. She's the executive director of the National Indigenous Survivors of Child Welfare Network. She joins us over Skype from Ottawa. And uh, Colleen, you are not just an activist that provides support to others. You and, and those closest to you have experienced violence as a result of certain policies. Tell me your reaction to the conclusion of this government inquiry. I, I suppose it, it, it confirms what you and many others already knew. Yes, I, I, I wasn't surprised at all by um, the findings. And um, I, I don't think I'll need to read the report because I, I think we've known for, for decades that, you know, the dehumanizing of Indigenous bodies is the problem in Canada. And there is a deep-seated systemic racist racism um, against Indigenous women um, that's contributing to the deaths and missing um, people. Can you tell me more about your family? I, I know that you uh, have lost those closest to you, a sister and a sister-in-law, to violence. You also grew up and, and uh, had an experience as an adoptee. Tell us more uh, about your experience and, and the, the 60s scoop for people that are not familiar to it, that, that, that um, policy that, that resulted in Indigenous children being, being taken from their, their homes and their families. Sure. So my sisters and I were um, a part of the 60s scoop, which is um, a term that's used to describe an era in Canada where thousands and thousands of Indigenous children were removed from their homes and communities and adopted into non-Indigenous homes across Canada, overseas and into the United States. It was a mass trafficking of us and um, a lot of us ended up in really awful households. Uh, not everybody, but a lot of us did. Um, some of those homes were very violent, and um, we ended up fleeing those homes to escape and ended up in, you know, really precarious, vulnerable states as young adults, um, which is what happened to my sisters and I. Um, we fled our adoptive home and ended up back in Edmonton trying to find our biological family. Um, a year after we found our biological family, my older sister was murdered in a park downtown. Um, and, you know, I was 16 at the time, so I didn't realize how insidious the media was and, and their role that they play in, uh, you know, how they talk about us and, you know, how they, they almost make it seem that, you know, it's our fault that we've been murdered for the places that we, we you know, we gravitate towards. So... Um, you know, that was a really painful time for me. Um, and then my sister-in-law, um, she was also found in a park, um, not a park, I'm sorry, a field uh, just outside of Wetaskiwin in 2004. Her case is unsolved. But at that time, there was over, I don't know, up to 20 um, Indigenous women found in fields and ditches in and around Edmonton. Um, and then many of those are still unsolved. Uh, and I, I know that you've spoken about the, the dehumanization of Indigenous peoples. I, you were mentioning there just the, the harmful effects of the stereotyping and the racism and the misogyny that we have seen in the media. This government inquiry doesn't go far enough for you. Um, what more would you like to see? Well, you know, I do a lot of lecturing in universities and colleges and, you know, the, the very basic understanding of, you know, how Canada was made um, and the lack of, of, of understanding of Indigenous people in Canada um, is, is just appalling. You know, you're, you're having, you know, um, young people going to fields of, of um, where they're influencing policy or they're in the helping field and they're, they are the next wave of systemic racism that our people are experiencing and that needs to stop. There is a level of mechanism that needs to take place where the government needs to really um, take responsibility for its role and how it's contributed to that to that, that level of, of violence that we experience every day through media and policy, but also make changes where, you know, it's integrated into curriculum and the, the narrative and the dialogue of how Canada was built um, and where, you know, how the treaties are played into that, how that is part of the narrative of Canada, which is largely left out. Um, 
you know, the, the average Canadian doesn't even know about the treaties in Canada. Um, so there's a huge narrative missing that contributes to why Canadians hate Indigenous people. Well, it's a very important story, and thank you for helping us understand it just that bit better. Really appreciate your time, Colleen Heal Cardinal. We wish you, of course, best of luck with um, all your efforts and all of your work. Thank you very much.